Um, you know, I, I think uh, it's, uh, it's only added to the sense of volatility uh, about the market. Um, I'm still sticking to uh, a fairly, uh, I still see decent upside for the market. Uh, from about 84.50, we're now looking at about 8,200, given that there are some uh, downgrades made by uh, consensus for, for some of the stocks. Uh, for the most part, I'm still positive. Um, I'm, I'm still optimistic that we could see, I, I think in terms of potential catalysts that I can see, it's probably going to be uh, the tax reform package that will hopefully we'll get some more vis visibility on that uh, in the second half of 2017. And that, that could uh, spur the market uh, closer to that 8,200 level. Now, as far as what uh, Trump has done, uh, I guess it's only lent to the sense of uh, unpredictability. We think that maybe in the next uh, two, three months, it's going to be quite volatile. In fact, I would expect that the market... Uh, given the lack of leads uh, in terms of domestic leads, it, it's probably going to uh, tr trade sideways for the next uh, maybe one to two months. Uh, and, and hopefully we'll and we still think that maybe it's going to be sideways the next one to two months, but maybe in the, probably in the second half we'll be looking at uh, a potential bounce given the uh, tax reform package. Uh, this is JP Ong. Um, I have a very interesting uh, question on interesting comments coming from one of the Fed's key members last Friday. That's San Francisco Fed, Fed President John Williams, who said that although three rate hikes are still much, very much on the table, he mentioned that it might make sense to hike rates as early as March. Now, if this does come to pass, what does it do to the outlook for local markets here? Well, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, if you look at overall markets, we would probably prefer uh, less uh, rate hikes. So I, I really want to see the, um, if, it, if it comes a bit earlier, I don't think it's going to be, uh, it's going to, you know, alter materially our view, uh, f you know, for a year-end uh, target. But uh, I think the, mo the more important thing to see is, uh, you know, the speed at which the rate hikes uh, happen. Is it... Uh, is it going to be, are we going to see three rate hikes this year? Are we going to see two? And I, I think based on the, the job report, sorry, the unemployment uh, report that came out, as well as the pace of the wage growth, I think now, uh, I think what I'm, I'm seeing from a lot of economists, they think that the probability of one rate hike is, uh, is greater than the probability of three rate hikes. So I would think uh, overall that should be a bit more of a positive uh, for the market because I think some, um, some analysts and, and some investors have raised concerns about the impact of, uh, you know, of uh, ri rising rates in terms of overall valuations. If you see there's really a negative correlation between, for example, the risk-free rate and the PEs of, of the Philippine market, that, that negative correlation I is quite strong. So assuming we get a more uh, tempered uh, rate hike and coupled with the fact that we, you know, we could see potential for uh, an upgrade in terms of our uh, growth rate out GDP growth rate outlook supported by that uh, tax reform package and that should be uh, beneficial for the market or at the very least keep uh, valuations uh, at levels where they are at the moment. Um, Haj, last month you uh, beyond the tax reform package you also mentioned bank lending being one of the drivers for growth um, given the Fed's uh, potential actions are we looking at uh, potential BSP rate hike uh, increase and uh, how does that affect stocks in general in the economy too? I think for the most part uh, you know the in, in terms of the BSP we're looking at uh, two rate hikes uh, but if you've seen um, I, I, sh I share a similar view to what I think some of the uh, presidents of the major banks have been saying they, you know, they, they think these rate increases, uh, you know, uh, should be pretty much neutral at worst. I, I still think that uh, rates overall are still attractive, if you, especially if you compare it to uh, where we came from uh, four to five years ago. It's still attractive. If, if you notice, it, it's still very uh, competitive with the bank. So if you are an uh, investor looking to, uh, you know, to, to borrow to support your medium-term uh, uh, capex plans, then it's still quite a, a conducive uh, environment in that sense. So, I think banks should benefit. You know, in, in some of the some of the uh, the assets in the portfolio uh, should benefit. Uh, but in, in terms of um, you know lending rates, I, I wouldn't expect uh, you know a major uh, spike in lending rates uh, because of uh, because of these movements. And for that and for that reason, I still think a lot of people are going to be borrowing, which is why we're. Uh, we're looking at, uh, at about mid-teens uh, loan growth uh, this year.
uh, at the very least. Now, Hatch, having painted that environment, let's t let's talk about your sectoral stock picks. I mean, earlier uh, you'd also mentioned mining with Semirara. Uh, you're also looking at other stocks like Ayala Land and Metro Bank. Tell us about um, your outlook for these stocks and if there are any other stocks that come into your play. Yeah, um, you know, um, you know, we're still. I, I think at the start of the year, we we we, we identified stocks that we thought were uh, undervalued. I think for for the most part, in terms of our stock picking strategy, it's really focusing on stocks that are expected to post uh, above market growth, and likewise trade at attractive valuations. When I talk about valuations, it's not just on an absolute basis, uh, but also looking at where they are compared to uh, their historical average. Um, I think overall for the market, we're in terms of a you know typically a lot of analysts look at it on a price to earnings basis, but we actually when we actually back tested the market, it was actually price to book that was a fi fairly strong predictor in terms of uh, overall market performance, and on a price to book basis, we're still attractive trading at 2.2 times uh, versus the historical average of about uh, 2.5 times in the past five years. Now, uh, a lot of the stocks I mentioned actually fit the bill in terms of looking at in terms of their price to book now looking attractive versus historical level. So. On the property side, Ayala Land is one. I think the conglomerates, it's Ayala Corp. And, um, you know, Metro Bank uh, is, uh, it also fits the bill. It's, I think it's only trading at about one, uh, one times price to book now. And that looks fairly attractive versus the uh, ROE, which we think will eventually uh, elevate, be elevated to about 12 uh, to 13 percent. Now, um, you know, I, I think for, for our viewers also, I mean, I would also focus on stocks that uh, offer uh, growth plus yield. I mean, yield, in a way, gives, uh, you know, adds some safety in, in terms of, and, def, you know, a defensive nature to some stocks. So one stock I would look at the moment, at the moment is uh, Shell. Uh, the implied dividend yield now is, is about 4%, but we think that's quite conservative. Uh, Shell potentially could benefit from uh, inventory gains in the fourth quarter, uh, given the rally in oil prices that we saw towards the end of last year. So that 4% Yield could end up being uh, somewhere closer to about five and a half, five and a half percent, assuming Shell, uh, uh, you know, posts uh, inventory gains in the fourth quarter. Another name I'd mention as well—it's a bit of a—it's—it's it's, uh, relatively it's a sm it's smaller cap name compared to Shell. Uh, would be Phoenix Petroleum uh, on an EV EBITDA. It's only trading at about uh, eight times, and uh, you know what, what we like about their business is they're they're focused on really uh, you know service stations. So basically, the uh, retail slash marketing uh, segment of uh, of the local oil industry, and uh, we like that because you know typically uh, you're able to pass on movements uh, in oil prices. It's likewise a play on um, increased motorization uh, as well as increasing GDP per capita, and uh, with, with GDP growth uh, still expected to you know remain robust. We're looking at about 7.2 percent uh, GDP growth this year and 6.8% uh, GDP growth next year, we think uh, stocks such as Phoenix should be uh, one of the beneficiaries of, of, of that uh, favorable macroeconomic backdrop. Now, f finally, Hajj, of course, uh, within the next few days, we're expecting earnings releases from a few big companies with Globe and Semex Philippines key among them. What's your outlook on the upcoming earnings season and whether or not Globe and Semex might be able, might give us a hint of, uh, of the tone for earnings season this, uh, this, you know, for the next couple of weeks? Well, uh, I, you know, I don't expect a lot of uh, positive. Uh, I, I think on Globe, I'm not expecting a, a major surprise. I, I think f in the, for the most part, I think Globe, in terms of their earnings growth, it's going to be quite muted. I think we're looking at, um, you know, six to six to eight uh, percent earnings growth over the next two years. Uh, a lot of that, in a way, the earnings will be partly be weighed down by the uh, the, the significant capital expenditures that Globe. Uh, has had to undertake, especially with the with the acquisitions and likewise uh, spending on their network as well. So that's going to lead into uh, elevated levels of interest rate, uh, inter interest expenses as well as uh, depreciation. So I wouldn't expect a surprise there. I think Semic should uh, remain quite strong. Uh, you know, if if you're looking for a proxy for uh, accelerated infrastructure spending, Semex is one place. So I think for the most part, I think consensus is looking at, uh, I think, 14, 15% uh, earnings growth over the medium term for Semex. And I think uh, given the environment and given this, uh, you know, this uh, level of investment that both the government and the private sector wants to uh, accelerate, 
uh, I think that should be very uh, favorable for a company like Semex. So it, probably if you're looking for a proxy for infrastructure sending, Semex is one way to play it. And I think the earnings result uh, in the fourth quarter should only confirm the, uh, the favorable environment that they have at the moment.